fuego. Holy Ghost. So y'all think I'm wild, huh? I was watching you. Fuego. Cristo vive. Okay, so this is the trinkets we're going to pray for? Nice. Well, y'all catching your breath, I'll tell y'all a story. There was a little boy who was born without a skeletal. No bones. The human body needs bones so its organs can function. So what do you do? You're some of the poorest people in the world. You don't have access to technology, medicine, health. And our nation is in a state of war. The area where this boy was born is uh, our church is underground. Do y'all understand underground church? What that means to us is if you're discovered, you're murdered. So the Christians pray. God gives location to each Christian individually. And you can't tell anybody. Because they may be a they may, they may narc you to the bad guys. God tells you what time to be at that location. God tells you what day, what time, and what location. I've decided tonight to tell you some things that are unusual to you. But to believers like me, <laughs> I'm going to get you. <laughs> Brother Bill's gone. He can't correct me now. <laughs> He'll have to get me when I'm out there in December. <laughs> so until then, I'll be free. <laughs> what? So these believers are huddled up in this location, God said. It wasn't very many because... Not many people believe in the Holy Ghost. Not many believe in the presence and the glory of God. And not many believe in the power of God. But the ones that do are there. And they're worshiping God. Shadabah, 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 shadabah. We shadabah where I live. <laughs> and all of a sudden this lady walks in. Nobody knows her. And she says, I'm looking for a, na a man whose name is Pastor. Because <laughs> this man appeared to me and gave me a time, a location, and a date and said, talk to Pastor. So which one of y'all's named Pastor? So the pastor didn't say he was pastor. He said, so you, are you a believer? She says, what's that? See, <laughs> 
God is with us. He loves us. He helps us. In war, he helps you in peace. He helps you all the time. And so he, he says, what do you need? He, she says, my grandson is sick. That's when this lunatic pastor's wife, a woman of faith and power and mercy and grace and anointing of the Holy Ghost, jumps between pastor and the woman. She said, I've heard enough. And pastor says, I, we haven't heard anything. <laughs> this woman is frightening. I've known her since she was a teenager before she got married. And I've watched the mercy of God come on her and develop them and gift them and use them in thousands of healings. She said, here's how it's going to go. Talking to the grandma. You're going to get what's called born again. And then we're going to sit down on the concrete and seek God till Jesus comes. And the woman says, is it going to help my, grand, my grandson? She says, absolutely. She said, then I'll do it. She said, I don't know what born again is, and I don't know what, who Jesus is, and I don't know what fasting is, but we'll do it. See, y'all's world, most believers don't fast and pray and seek the Lord anymore. We're changing that. That's why I'm here. I have a job to help you see the need for it. Because if you want to do the deeds that we do, you must seek the Lord Holy Ghost. Amen. You, you must get his presence. You must get his glory. You must get his power. You need the whole package. <laughs> so... This pastor's wife moves. She said, explain it to her. So he explained Jesus to her. She got saved and led her to Jesus. Then pastor's wife steps back in. Sit down. She said, what are we going to do? She said, we're going to wait on Jesus. And they just sit there. No food, no drink, nothing. All day. Second day. Third day, and the grandma stands up and said, the voice that spoke to me and told me to come here told me to go where my grandson is. Pastor's wife said, deal. So she goes, Monterrey, Nuevo León, Mexico. She got on the bus. They don't have vehicles like you. The poor people don't. She got on a bus and went 14 hours to Monterrey, Nuevo León. She walks up to this hospital where her grandson was, and it's all these news people are there. The reason the news people are there is because your scientists were there studying this baby eight-year-old as to why he was alive without a skeletal. Had a partial cranium, three or four vertebrae, part of a, a, a shoulder blade, a couple of ribs. That was it. <clears throat> Nothing else. It's, it's, it's chaos. The news is in a frenzy. And one of the family members saw Grandma walking up. Have you heard the news? No. Come. Ben, vamos a ver. They go in the hospital. They go to the room. And there's the little boy. 
on the bed jumping up and down. Do you believe in God? Then you believe God created heaven and earth. He's what we call creator God. He never stopped creation. He created, on that third day, he created that boy's bones all the way through. Now they're studying him as to where he got the bones. Smoke that and while I get you another. <laughs> if that was the end of the story, that would be an awesome story. But God. He just don't know when to quit things. It's like he really believes he's in charge. So a couple of months later, they're at another one of these God-chosen spots. And who he invited is there. He told them the hour and the day and the place. And they're in there, the Christians are. Shut about. Shut about. Shut about. All right. In walks Granny. But this time with about 28 or 30 people. And she walks up to this guy whose name she calls Pastor. And she says, this is my family. And we have one question for you Christians. God healed my grandson. He's right there. But we want to know, we want to know will he do it again? See, the world don't know your God. We need to tell them about him. Amen. So you need to know him. Amen. You need to experience time with him. And the pastor don't know what to say because of course he will. And she says, you're telling me that God will do what he did for my grandson again? He says, yes. Your, our God is endless in his love for us. She said, I thought maybe that was true. I brought my granddaughter just in case. <laughs> granddaughter, 13 years old had been captured by the bad guys. They had raped her, I don't know how many hundreds of times, mutilated her. She's got STDs. She's been tortured by these people. She was on her way to school, walking. They, all, they don't have thing, uh, protection, and they don't have little school buses, and they don't have little cars, so you got to walk. These bad guys come roaring up and these schoolgirls are walking to get them all. Y'all want to jump and shout. Can you do it anyway? When it's not going your way.
Can you heal the sick of the wounded and the abused and the forgotten? I told you I'm going to get you. Unless I get told to sit down by two people, I'm going to carry this on. Your God is alive and there's nothing to fear. Amen. These bad guys are who they are. But we are who we are. Yes. We are sons of God. Yes. As soon as the pastor's wife heard that the granddaughter was sick, what do you think she did? She jumps in the middle. She says, I've heard enough. The husband says, we haven't heard anything yet. <laughs> Pastor's wife tells the whole family, all of y'all get born again, and we're going to sit down on the concrete until Jesus come. Grandma turned and looked at the family and said, I told you they was going to say that stuff. Pastor led them all to Jesus. Pastor's wife set them down on the floor. Said, let us worship. No food, no drink. One day, two days, three days. Thirteen-year-old stands up. Looks at her mom. She says, I feel good. Mom says, what'd you say? She said, what happened to the odor? She said, I don't know. So they took her and went straight to the hospital where they, had, where they first took her and checked her. After eight hours of tests, the doctor comes out with two reams of paper, two handfuls. He said, this is the one you brought me. And this is the one she is now. Here we go. As she was the day she was born, she is again. It's called creation, restoration, love, mercy, no limit. No limit. You're not going to change me, much less heaven. Jesus loves you. And the mercy of God wants to triumph in your world. And we're going to let him. I don't know how y'all can do these conferences over and over and over. I, I sit here the last two days listen to these men talk and these women talk and I'm about to blow up. What is up with you? How can you take this? <laughs> okay, what's going to happen is we're going to pass out one match per person and we're going to go burn hell down. Yeah. You, want, you want to know why? Because we can. The, 
These people that are talking are the best in the world. They're awesome. We got to raid hell right now. Just because they deserve it and we can. So if you will, let's do some Bible so y'all will feel churchy. <laughs> let's go to Hebrews chapter 11. It's a brand new verse I have for you. <laughs> verse 1. I don't know how this is going to go, but I'm pretty sure we're going to try to do a fire tunnel after a while. But you have to understand, I enjoy, see, I, I got the best dad in the world. And, and he lets me in his playhouse. And he's just amazing. He brings the best toys. I've never seen these toys he brings. He just, he, it's so much fun to go in the playhouse with, with dad because you just know he's got the newest, best toys of anybody. <laughs> and he just lets you play with them until you get tired. Yeah. And I will. I'll play till I get tired and I'll go to my room. But I'm a marathon runner, so probably you'll get tired first. So. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 1, first three words. Read them to me loud and clear. Now that was somewhat of a unison deal, but I want it stronger. What? Now Say it again. Now Say it again. That little boy with no skeletal, what did he need to hear? That little tore up young girl, what she need? She didn't need your arguments and your awesomeness, what she need? Now there's some stuff going on that's unusual. Like diamonds. A few weeks ago, I was in Plano, Texas, right north of Dallas. Holy Ghost smashed us. Diamonds just fell, room, closed room like this. Diamonds just fell into place. Really nice. I have pictures. Pretty nice. This woman with I heard Brother Bill calling it out last night. I believe somebody got their face healed. Yeah. Metal. I want to tell you this story. This is I was with the uh, John G. Lake people. Healers, peoples. They let me come. I'm a healer, I guess. I'm a son of God, so it must be right. In a con one of their conferences, and this lady... Had all this pain, she did this car wreck and all these multiple operations and misery and titanium plates and screws and rods and pins and she was prayed for and a couple of days later after the prayer was made, we have pictures of all this stuff. The, uh, she, she's awakened, something's in the bed with her and she's rolling over this stuff, it's hurting her. She's, she gets up. Moves the cover and there's three pounds of steel in the bed. What? For you people that don't believe, that was especially for you. 
you need something to talk about, so I'm going to give you a bunch of it. <laughs> but there's room for you unbelievers. Jesus called you the condemned. <laughs> but I'm a believer. You ever wonder what one looks like? So how do you think the little boy feels in the whole family? How do they feel about Jesus, the creator? How do you think the 13-year-old feels about Jesus, the creator, in the whole family? How do you think this lady in, in Texas feels about Jesus pulling that steel out of her and giving her new, <laughs> new joints? Wow. That's all you can say. <laughs> Really? Wow. That's awesome. Come on. I'm going to try to explain to you. I'm not, real, I'm not a good teacher like these guys you've been around. All I know how to do is raise the dead. That's the only thing I got out of the deal. <laughs> I, I don't know. I can do that, and it catches. It's catching. It gets on folks. So tell me when faith is, according to Hebrews 11, 1. When is faith? When is faith? When is faith? When was it 2,000 years ago? When was it 1,000 years ago? When was it 500 years ago? When was it 25 years ago? When is it now? I do apologize to you for the meanness of hell and the audacity to call our God a liar and try to refute us and hate us and hurt us and all of those. I do. I apologize to you for that. But this is what he can't change. And we believe. We are believers. Jesus is king. Now, while you're turning over to Acts chapter 1, I'm going to tell you a story. Is that okay? Yeah. In 1995, I had been on the mission field 20 years. And I had sought the Lord for years to raise the dead in uh, one year, two years, three years. My wife and I sought the Holy Ghost for mercy. I was full of zeal and energy and I couldn't heal the sick. So we began to take the Bible apart. I took the Bible completely apart. Took everybody out of there. Certain things I studied about them. Their family life. Their prayer life. Their fasting life. Their results. From being obedient. So I took all these guys and I wrote these reams of notebook, these notebooks of information about these people from Genesis through to Revelation. Did the entire thing because when you're first in the mission field, you don't have any churches. So, so you have time. So I learned how to seek the Lord. And it's paid off in great dividends for everybody around the world. It's a good thing. All right. I didn't know that 
I, I, I studied Solomon and how he built the temple and how David got all this stuff together and all this. And how when they dedicated the temple, there's this, there's this presence came. These people were believers. These people were obedient, awesome folks. You can judge and do whatever you want, but there's only one. His name is God. Yeah, that's fine. And, but when they dedicated the temple, there was this presence came. That these men who had, had never sinned, uh, as far as we know, uh, they were dedicated from birth to be these priests and these men of God. And they, they carried it through all the way. And they, they were in the temple dedicating the temple. Finally got there. And these people are people that we think would have been able to stand in the presence of God and be around God. But when God came, none could stand in his presence. It's called the Shekinah glory. Yes. And all through the Bible, I recognize that that stuff comes sometimes. And I had never heard of it on, on, in, my, in my world. Uh, I never met anybody that had ever experienced that, but it's in the Word of God. Just like dead raising, just like heal the sick, just like be born again. Presence, glory. It's legal. Fire. So I started seeking the Lord for it. So in 1995, actually December of 94, uh, I got this impression. Y'all call it a word of the Lord. And it turns out it was from him. So it may have been a word of the Lord. I got this impression that our entire work, what we were going to do because God is awesome and he's worthy of praise and worship and honor that we should seek him. So we started in January of 95. We started three days fasting, two days eating the whole year. And so to terminate in September, the ninth month of judgment, ninth meaning judgment, we would fast the whole month. I didn't know what he would do. I didn't know anybody to ask about this. All I had was reference to what I could read. And there, where I live, there's no internet. And so I had to study the old way. All these books and things. Thousands upon thousands of hours mulling over past revivals and great men of God through the ages that we know about. All of them got to God through prayer and fasting and seeking his presence. All of them did. So that's what we did. I, I, there's no way I'm going to get it past the international missionaries. And I'll never get it past the, the what we call directors, elders, y'all call them. There's hundreds of them, and we're, we're never in unity on much of anything. So I went to the first to the international group, and I sat them down, and I said, this is what God said to me. I'm pretty sure it's the word of the Lord. All of them fell on the ground crying and weeping, yes, we're in. I was just stunned. There's always one that'll stand up and just fold his arms and look at me sideways. <laughs> None of them did. I thought, wow, this is awesome. So I got the elders together, several hundred of them. I fed them really good first. Talking to them, showed them scriptures, several dozen scriptures about it. I said, I want this for us, but I don't have a clue how to go about it. I think we can fast and pray, and if we'll do it as a group, 
And we'll do it diligently. Not by law, by grace and mercy. Because we're after the mercy of the Lord. Law is easy. So they agreed. There wasn't even one disagreement in both worlds. I was just standing there. With, I, couldn't, I didn't know what to say. I, I had all these rebuttals ready. I didn't need them. God was in it. So January the 1st, we started. 3-2-3-2, three, two, three, two, all the way. January, February, March, plus doing all the work we do. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September. I locked it out. I shut myself out. I went in my room away from my wife, kids, the whole work, everything. And I laid on the, on the floor and told Jesus how awesome he was. No food, no drink, nothing. Day seven, I got picked up off the floor and stuck on the wall. It was pretty bizarre. I'd never heard of that. And nothing like that ever happened to me personally. I'm this organized person. Look down the highway a long ways. God downloaded information into my head. It was, it was, it was like, I don't know, it was a, I don't know. It was instant. Then he dropped me on the floor and I fell. Bang. I run into my desk. I was writing on anything. This information was flowing. It was like, wow. This is how they wrote the Bible. I'm telling you. I wrote pages of information from the Holy Ghost. Still we're looking it over. Still. And, and uh, I didn't know how anybody else. I walked downstairs on day 21. Hadn't seen my family. Anybody. I walked downstairs. I wanted to see Miss Hogan. Uh, check on the kids. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I walked down there. They were doing school. They froze, all of them frozen. They're looking at me. My oldest daughter, she's a blessing. You need to meet her. She says, and who are you? <laughs> and I'm looking at her. What? Dad, tell us what happened. I said, get your bicycle. This is day 21 of a nine-month fast. You understand? Eight months of three, two, 21 days of, of total. She said, what are we going to do, Dad? I said, we're going biking. I want to see what I got my hands on. I'm a bicycler. I'm a runner. I do everything. So there you go. I go out. My daughter's an awesome biker. We get out there. We're on the same team, her and I and the some other people. It's the best average I've ever put on paper. 25 miles an hour. That's right under Olympic stuff. And that was on day 21. So I, 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 I told Mrs. Hogan, I don't know what its name is, but something's got us. We never got tired. Her and I either won. We weren't depleted. We were awesome. It's biblical stuff here I'm telling you about. Oh, that's right. That's what we believe. That's right. You're right. I put myself together, went back out in the work. <clears throat> I, I made the decision to put together pastors' meetings to see where I was at. What do we, what we, to what do we have? This is 1995. I never even opened my mouth. They gave me the thing. It was like 50 of our pastors, and I opened my Bible. And when the pages hit, everybody there was knocked out. Unsaved neighbors running out of their homes screaming on the ground. <laughs> Bizarre starts how this started going. Every meeting from then on, all the rest of, all through October, we never ever, I could never say anything. All I got to do was open my Bible and... <laughs> 
You can't pray. You can't sing. You can do nothing. When God is there, the presence of the Lord, he encompasses everything. I was afraid now. Three weeks into this, and I've watched the greatest men I know fall to the power of God. Twenty seventh of October, nineteen ninety five. Seven thirty in the morning, my radio lights up. I'm on my way out. That we were doing this pastors' conference. I was trying to do a pastors' conference. It got, kept getting interrupted by this thing called. God. You're trying to get some strategy out to the peoples on how we're going to do the next year. You can't. You open your Bible, all of them fall on the ground. You can get nothing done. You can't even get the toilets clean. You can't get the garbage taken out. He just hits everything. All right. Third day, I, I, my, my radio lights up. My missionaries, we're trying to get some people in. Some more people are coming in. It's hundreds and hundreds of leaders. Missionaries are screaming, what is this? Oh, my God. Oh, man, I'm freaking out. I've never heard them talk like that. Because now it's not in our meetings it's in the road with us. Now it's done got into normal life. By the time I got there, there was a hundred people stuck to the dirt and can't move. <laughs> dirt, ground, grass. Trees. Anything you touch, you stuck to it. Dirt. <laughs> I never seen anything like it. I thought I didn't know what to think. I thought, oh my God, <laughs> what is this? Who knows about this? Nobody has ever told me about this. What is this? I go around the corner. This church was too small. We had all this big tent up and all, and there's like. Seven or eight hundred pastors and their families are all around there. And they're all bawling, wailing at 7.30 in the morning. I called as many elders. Them, there, there's 12 guys that work with me just right beside my feet. And I, I called it and I couldn't get them all because they were stuck to the dirt, some of them. The ones I could, I got them up there and I'm looking at them. And they're looking at me, just, <laughs> you, they, they make it no sense at all. I said, okay, what do you think? <laughs> and then it came, y'all. Now, what I want you to understand is, we were raising the dead to a week. Opening up 10, maybe 9 or 10 churches a month. Pulling down between 300 and 800 new converts a month. Miracles are flowing like water. We were happy. God was waiting on us. So he could give us something else. I stand up there and I'm looking because everybody's agitated. Everybody's bawling. The people are uncomfortable because we're freaked out. And we are not freaked out people. You look at me. You can see I'm not one. I'm not a freaked out person. <laughs> I will bona fidely get you. God is with us. I'm a son. I don't freak out. But when dad gets there, 
Everything changes. It don't matter how put together, how awesome, how miraculous, how powerful, how wonderful you got going is. Because you do have it going. The Spirit of God is with you. It is working. Anything you ask, you get. I'm serious. There's nothing we asked for we couldn't have. Everything. So when we went for the Shekinah, I should have known he was going to give it to us. But you don't know that. There's no experience. And then on 7.30 in the morning on October the 27th, 1995, the skies opened. Bright blue sunshine and this column of smoke descended. It was turning outside of itself, coming straight down out of the sky at us. It hit us. I had enough time to say, what are you? I never got out doing. (laughs) He's not interested in your response. You invited him to the dance. Let him dance. Dance. He hit us. I watched bodies fly of men. I know these are men of renown, stable, quality, dead raisers. And they were flipped through the air like a leaf. (laughs) All I got a chance to do was say, what are you? (laughs) And it was my turn to fly. (laughs) I flew. (laughs) I I got knocked out instantly. I woke up. I was probably the length of this thing from where I started. I don't know how I got there. I was drunk. I couldn't move. My upper body would work, but the rest of me was stuck to the floor, the ground, the dirt. There were 10 of my best men standing up talking to someone. I cannot see them. It was Jesus. They were screaming at me, Brother David, thank God you woke up. How did we get in this room, this palace? And I look around and I'm stuck to dirt. (laughs) My son Jody's there. I went went over there, I crawled over to him. (laughs) He grabbed me. Dad, I didn't know that about you. He was prophesying. Anybody that walked by, he grabbed him. He knew everything about him 100%. God opened the heavens to us. His world came to us, and we went into his world. Yeah. All right. I cannot tell you. You think that's awesome? It is. You think it is? It is. But then you lose, you lose it all. What little bit of control you have, you lost all of it now. But God don't see control like you see control. To him, control is 5,000 people on the ground shaking like a leaf in a windstorm. That's control to God. For eight or ten hours. For 15 years. This went on. You couldn't pray. You couldn't read. You couldn't talk. We would fight because none of us wanted to get up. None of us wanted to get up because whoever got up could get about a minute out and it was over. (laughs) And it depended on what you chose to do, whether it was sing or pray or talk. It don't matter. I'd tell the musicians, play. Mm -hmm." (laughs) Soon as they'd start playing, they'd get slapped, look like you just, I mean, that. 
We broke, I don't know how many instruments. They just get flipped all over the place. And then you turn to run from them, and you never make it whack. The presence of the Lord. Our God is a mighty God. We've had four visible Shekinah presences. All of them are different colors. Well, the ones we've seen. Uh, they would tie me. I, I made them tie me with a, with a lasso to a, to a post. So when God went through, I could stay up and look. <laughs> it's true. Because he would just knock everybody down. And I wanted to see what he was doing when we was all out. <laughs> Hundreds of people would speak in unknown languages. And I know lots of languages now. And I would hear people speaking French and German, English. And it's awesome. Your God is awesome. This went on for years. And then it started not leaving us. The services are awesome, but they're not like they were then. But then a few days ago, I was hiking in the big mountains in our work. Raining, cold, muddy. I don't know how many hundreds of people behind me. And they're singing. It's an amazing statement. To the demons that used to rule the area. Because it's a few miles of people just worshiping God. Old, young, little, big, sick, healed, and we're all suffering together. And I just turned and looked at this thing all the way back up to the cloud. Just, just a few weeks ago, a couple of months ago. And I'm looking, and I just said one thing to God, thank you. This is what we're about, healing nations. Do you hear me? We got to this place we was going to, they broke out the food, thank God we ate, thank you, thank you. And I'm, I'm in there, we're freezing, we're cold, we're, the Holy Ghost started just hitting us. I wonder who invited him. Because he just takes over. He doesn't even ask your permission. He doesn't get an eldership agreement. Then I noticed these men come out of the fog, and they walk over to me, and I'm looking at them, and I thought I recognized them, but they're old. And the guy walks up to me, the leader of them, he goes, Brother David, I see you're still the same. I said, yeah, I try to act like my dad. He's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Yeah. He said, we sinned against you and God, and we come here to repent if you'll bring us by. I said, who are you? And he told me, and this was the oldest war I was involved in up to now. 32 years. They split the work, and it was chaos for a minute, but we kept going and on and on he goes. And they finally down the trail saw the error of their ways, and they came back. And they repented. And my, here's what I do when my sons come back to me like that. You, it's easy. You just walk over to them, hug them. You see me do it, and you kiss them. And the Holy Ghost smashes them. <laughs> and that was just a few months ago, and since they've been back, they've opened 14 villages. Hundreds of new converts. Mercy. There's a new day. One of the guys, I don't remember which one it was, sorry, spoke about it. Said a new day is upon us. 
You have to hear me. Since January, we have a new wave of energy hit our work. The dead raisins have picked back up to one a week now. The, 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 the creation miracles are at least one, sometimes two a week. Souls are coming back by the fist. Hundreds and hundreds of, every time the missionaries call in, that's every day. They're telling me of, of, of the dozens of people that used to be with us that have repented and come back. And new families that are with us. There's a new day on us. I cannot allow you to believe the negative old day. Jesus is king. Okay, here's Nicaragua. A few months ago, I was in Nicaragua. And they, they can't break these areas, so they let me help them. Ms. Heidi does that. When we're there, we go out together and we break these new areas. And because we, I carry a hammer with me. It's called the word of God. Is not my word a hammer, says the Lord. Is not my word fire. And so uh, we were in Nicaragua, and they brought me to this place. Uh, and uh, it was a drug uh, thing, prostitutes, uh, sex slavery thing. And they, they went in there, and we're, the odds of us getting out are almost zero. But they said, you're here, Brother David. We're going to use you to your best ability. <laughs> I said, fine. Bring it. We go in there and I'm sitting there. I don't, my thing is I'm, I'm aggressive. You see me when I'm not talking, I'm quieter. I'm not subdued. I'm respectful to other people. And uh, I'm standing there and I'm watching the area because I'm watching these drug guys because that's all in our area where I live. They're serious bad guys. And in the middle of it all, here comes this prostitute. Y'all don't like these things. Y'all don't like people like me talking about it, but you need to hear it. She's dressed for work. That means she's not very dressed. She comes walking up there. She's got this twisted little boy. He's twisted. She's carrying this big kid. And she set him down on my shoes. This is a prostitute, a working prostitute. She's on the job. She said, they told me your God could do anything. I said, they told you right, darling. Heal my son, please. And I'm looking at a prostitute. <laughs> so I pick her son up. He's twisted, he's club-footed, his feet are turned, his hands. From drug, all the drugs and all the things they go through. And the little boy's just looking at me. No dad. No life. And in front of our eyes, the mercy of the gospel came. While I was holding that little boy, his feet straightened out. His hands straightened out. His head went straight. And he starts punching me. And I set him down. And for the first time in his life, he ran to his mother. And she said, she comes over there. I mean, she's dressed for work. And she gets down and grabs a hold of my, my pants. <laughs> and she asked me a question. Is that who Jesus is? 
I said, yes, then I want him. She gets born again in her dress, in her work clothes. And there I am holding her and kissing her just like anybody else. Because if Jesus loves her, I reckon I ought to also. I want to be like Dad. And that's, that's wonderful. You know it's wonderful. And then here comes the pimp. This boy's bad to the bone now. He's, he's muscular, he's tatted, he's all these scary things. And he walks straight up to me and he's giving me the talk. And I moved her out of the way and put her and her little boy behind me. He's called her a few names and said, she's mine. I said, not anymore. <laughs> he said, you won't make it out of here. I said, neither will you. <laughs> Your choice. He said, you crazy. <laughs> Maybe. But I don't believe your God has the power to, fool, to foolishly engage me. I am a son of God. You are a son of the demon. You have no power over me. Now get out. He said, I'm not going anywhere. I want to ask you one question. I watched your God heal that boy. I said, yes, he did. I watched her, I know her, I watched her bow in tears to your God. Could your God love me also? <laughs> yeah! Okay, it's time. Ah. All right, let's read a Bible verse so y'all can really feel doubly like you went to church. <laughs> Acts chapter 1, verse 8. What's going to happen to you? What does it say? All right, let's get in unison. What's going to happen to you? You shall receive. When what happens to you? That's right. Now, I have the amplified version up here. Guys like me need explanation. Because I don't get it the first go round with the these and the thou things. So I need to know what it means. It's been brought up to you. I've been listening. I've been hearing them say it. I want to explain it to you out of mind. It says it like this. You shall receive power. And it gives a description of what power is. This is power. Ability. So you need the Holy Ghost. You need the presence of God. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. You need the glory of the Father. Because when it comes, ability comes with it. Also a thing called efficiency. How efficient was that miracle in Nicaragua? I go in an unknown turf, unknown principalities. I'm, it's organized crime runs the place. No believers. First thing that happens is a miracle. Second thing that happens is salvation. Third thing that happens is the men run by principalities submit to the Holy Ghost. That's power, that's efficiency, that's ability. And it's something else here. Might. 
Say it with me. I Say this. I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. I receive the power. I receive the power. I receive the ability. I receive the, ability. I receive the, I receive the efficiency. I receive the might of the Father, of His presence, of His glory, of His goodness, of His meekness. I am His. He is mine. We are one in Jesus. Jump over to another verse since we happen to be in the vicinity. Acts chapter 4. Because these people were steady getting filled with the Holy Ghost in the presence of God. Most of you in here have had an experience. You need an experience every day. Every day I see God. Every day God touches me. Acts chapter 4 and verse 29. Observe their threats, God. Now the ones of you in here that have held breathing down your neck. That's an awesome place to be. With sickness and disease and loss and shame and duress. Happening in your life right now. I need you to look up at the Father right now. Look up at Him. And say these words to Him. Lord. Lord observe their threats. Observe their threats. And, grant and grant. To your bond servants. To your bond full, full freedom. And declare, to declare the message fearlessly. And in Jesus' name, and in Jesus name I, will. I will. You see how fearless I am. You see I say things you won't hear from other people. It's because I believe you deserve the truth. That's what I believe. I'm not looking for friendship. I'm looking for soldiers. And once we engage the enemy together and we're faithful to each other, we become friends. There are miracles everywhere of all sorts. All right, we're going to do verse 30, but I want, to, I want to do the multiplying person thing. I saw you come up and it reminded me. Thank you. <laughs> do you all know Pastor Maldonado from Miami? Yes. All right, they're friends of ours also. I was down there in this, one of his conferences. Had me at my session, I was doing it, you know. I had a blast, yay. Okay. And after the session, it was a day session, and after the thing, because I had to go somewhere, uh, they brought us in there to do this, uh, this uh, VIP food thing. And I told my men, stay in the corner, because there was some really valuable folks in there. So I'm standing there. I'm not, I'm not taking a seat. I'm not entertaining it. I'm not, uh, it's not that I don't agree or disagree. It's none of your business. <laughs> and I'm just standing there observing. And this fellow walks up to me. Never seen him in my life. Valuable man. One of the largest churches in Guatemala. If not the largest. Brother David. Thank you for coming to my church. Uh oh. Now look. I apologize to you ahead of time about all these miracles. I had nothing to do with this. I was just in the proximity zone. It's dad. He brings new toys to the thing every time we play. 
You never know what he's going to do. He's awesome. He's just awesome. It's so much fun to get in his playroom. He brings these brand new toys from his storehouse. Because my Bible says the storehouses of the Lord are full. My Bible says the river of God is full. So for you people that like misery and deserts and things like that, help yourself. I will be planted by the river of living water. And my tree will forever be green. And my fruit will be abundant. I am a son of God. And that's how we roll. So this fellow says to me, I want to thank you for coming to my church. And I rear back and look at him. I'm not the best with names, but I got this face deal. I, I can, years from now, I can tell you where you were sitting and what you had on in these meetings. It's an awesome thing. I like it. <laughs> and this fellow, I look, I'm looking at him. I'm looking him up and down. He said, I want to thank you. My church will never be the same. I said, excuse me, excuse me. You're confused. He said, Brother David, I expect that out of you. I said, you expect me to say you're confused? <laughs> he said, absolutely. He said, you are a bizarre human being, man. I said, well, you got that part right. I'm a son of God. This is how we act. He said, I got proof you at my church. I said, where in the cat hair are you from? Brother Hogan, Guatemala, I live and work in this La Ciudad de Guatemala, Guatemala City. I said, it's been a while since I've been to Guatemala. And he pulls his phone out. He said, the song you sang, we sing it every day. I said, I don't sing. He said, yes, you do. I got you on tape right here. You introduced a new song. You played a couple of instruments. I said, no, no, no. All I do is raise the dead. I don't play instruments. My sister's got all those gifts. You're not going to ruin this for me. And he turned his thing on. There I am, big as you. I'm going, what? He said, it's amazing, the miracles, uh, hundreds of miracles. And there's nothing I can say. I said, I need the time and the date of that, please. Because there's a phenomenon afoot. <laughs> so he, he gave it to me, and I wrote it down. And so I, I went back to my calendar where, where this guy was. And I looked, and I was in Germany. It toasts in Germany, preaching the gospel. I, I went back to Mexico, and the brothers came to this pastor's deal I was doing. And, and a group of them come up to me. Hermano David, oh, hombre, gracias a Dios, hombre, Cristo te ama, hermano. And I'm looking at them. Pues, see. Sí. Brother David, thank you. God loves you. Thank you, Brother David. Thank you. And I'm looking at him. ¿Qué tal, hombre? ¿Qué pasa? <laughs> What's going on? What do you mean? Brother David, we were in the village and we heard a horn, an air horn. So the whole village goes to sea and you come driving up in an 18-wheeler. I said... I can drive the 18 wheeler. When was this? <laughs> and they told me the day. Now I got it memorized. It was the day I was in Guatemala and the day I was in Alemania. I was in Germany and I was in Mexico and I was in Guatemala. 
preaching the gospel. I said, what was on this 18-wheeler? They said, Brother Hogan, we, we got the receipt here. I said, let me see that receipt. And sure enough, there was my signature on it. <laughs> and the date is on there. I said, what was on the truck? Brother Hogan, you brought us all these blocks and rebar and bags of, of, of cement and all of this material for our church. And now we've built it. I said, I'm coming. I went out there myself and touched the blocks. They are real. <laughs> for you who say, I don't believe that. That was especially for you. I have to convince you unbelievers with the phenomena and the power of the presence of the mercy. There's more. In the last six months, my eyes have been turning bright blue. It's over a dozen recorded times now. Really bright, like bright. And healing breaks out. <laughs> a couple of days ago down in West Virginia, they brought me a stage four. I like the playhouse. I grabbed the stage four lady and I'm praying for her. My eyes went to blue fire. <laughs> And my pupils turned into the shape of a dove. Uh, and the people saw it. Deaf. Healed. Lame. Cancers. Tumors. Whack. We were in Connecticut, Jeff Jansen and I were in, in uh, Cincinnati. The blue fire came. This lady came up and her eyes turned blue. My eyes turned blue and hers, she freaked out because she's had all these dental problems and all this stuff and right in front of us, God did the surgery and gave her gold teeth. And there were 14 people got gold teeth. The funnest new toy was God. When she got home and all of, her, all of her pain's gone, she studied her mouth and her teeth are there and her doctors verified this now. All of it's done good, yay. Okay. But the, the funnest part to me well, she, I've got this email up in my room. I forgot to bring it. I was going to read it to you so you could actually see paper. But she says, look here, Brother David. I looked into your eyes and the fire, the blue. It was like looking into another dimension. That's when I got healed and other people were healed. And she says, and then I get home and I'm amazed at God and what he did to my teeth. And I go to bed and my computer lit up. So I go in there. It's late at night. She goes in there. God woke a person up on the other side of the world, gave them her Facebook account, her name, all of her details, and they sent her a message. And God said this to her on Facebook. <laughs> Here's what heaven told this person to write her. Tonight, you have seen my son's eyes. Stay in the fire. 